Hello everyone. We'll talk about key points of implant prosthetics and digital dentistry in an easy and enjoyable way and solve side effects in this prosthodontics on Friday. I am Dr. Jo Inho, the MC of the program. Today is the fourth digital special lecture, and it will be the last lecture by Dr. Lee Soo Young, who is with Line Dental Office. Hello. We talked about digital dentistry. You delivered the lectures passionately, and this is the last lecture. Thank you very much for your lectures. So this is the last lecture you're going to deliver. What are you going to talk about today? I am covering a series of five lectures here. I'm going to talk about the most important subject when it comes to the implant placement, which is the digital guide. I will briefly introduce that. So this is related to the implant. Therefore, I look forward to the lecture. If you are watching on the dental site, you can ask questions in real time using the chatting window on the right hand side. Please leave your questions there and we will answer in the Q&A session. If you participate in the chatting, we have prepared Starbucks coffee coupons as questions in the real-time fashion in the chatting window and enjoy the coffee. So let's get started with the Dr. Lee's lecture. Sadly, I have arrived already to my last lecture today. I'm going to talk about the digital implant guide, and I hope this helps to enrich your dental practice. This is the content. First, what is a digital implant guide? What are the preparations to make a digital guide? Lastly, the benefits of using a digital guide. First, what is a digital implant guide? As a prosthodontist, in the posterior region, functional, and if it is aesthetic, it would be better. I fabricate the custom abutments and the superstructures. In the anterior region, functional, as well as aesthetic, prosthesis is what I want to make. It doesn't succeed all the time. A case like this can happen. You can see the aesthetic problems in patients who visit us. In many cases, in the posterior region, functionally and periodontally, poor conditions are the reasons for visiting us. So from a prosthodontist perspective, we scan and fabricate custom abutment and the prosthesis, but basically all these things are conducted after an implant is placed. That is the problem. So what is important is how can we place the implants in accurate positions so that Prosthesis can be functional and aesthetic and, first of all, stable in the long run in the mouth of a patient. So how can we place the implants in precise? We have tried it for a long time. This is something we have used for a long time to place an implant in more precise positions. In general, the conventional surgical stents have limitations basically on a model or a panorama. They are designed, so if you look at it, they look pretty well placed, but in the canine, toward the root, the implant and the root can touch with each other, so we have limited information. 
this is a surgical guide using the vacuum. Looks okay in terms of the positions. However, in terms of the directions, the guide channel is short. Therefore, when you drill, it can go different directions like the yellow lines. So there is a limitation with that. To resolve the problem, Austin has two conventional guide systems. One is the parallel guide, and the other one is the smart guide, which is used currently. The parallel guide has a cylindrical sleeve. An appropriate size can be selected befitting the patient for surgery, mesodistal distance or the distance between the implants like two in the picture, they can be controlled or to a certain degree the direction can be controlled. This is a rather simple guide and that this is a more advanced guide. If you use the smart guide kit, on the model, you can do the mock surgery first. Into the drilled holes, as you can see, metal guys are inserted. Thermoplastic material is used for the guide. As you can see, it is dipped into a hot water 60 degrees in Celsius for a minute, and then it becomes soft and it becomes moldable. With that, on a model, a guide is made, and after a minute in room temperature, it gets hardened. After sterilization, it can be used for drilling. If you use the smart guide, as we do the mock surgery first, the distance between the implants and with the tooth can be controlled, and axial inclination can be controlled as well. An appropriate drill for the guide is used, therefore the depth can be limited. So the depth is limited to 7 millimeters here, so initial point can be drilled with the guide, which is um, easily available in the guide kit from Austin three-dimensional guide, mesodistal buccolingual axial inclination, as well as what is important is the depth control is required for such a guide. This is the requirement for the next generation guide. In the picture, an implant studio, implant design software, at the bottom, you can see the alveolar nerve canal running. Depending on the length of the implant, uh, the canal can be invaded, so that should be considered. That's why we need a guide that can do the depth control. For proper implant positions, we need these four, mesodistal, epicocoronal, labiopalatal positions, and implant angulation. These need to be considered. The most important thing would be epicoronal position. Currently, the digital guide provides the biggest advantage, which is epicoronal positioning. In the anterior region, it should be properly placed in proper depth, so stable and aesthetic prosthesis can be possible. The provisional restoration can be used without a guide. In the past, we made the provisional restoration, the free gingival margin, the provisional margin, based on that four millimeters depth. That's the guide for placing an implant in the anterior region. So depth control is very important. In the posterior region, depth should be proper for appropriate biologic width. And when an abutment is selected and the prosthesis is delivered, that can be functional in the mouth of a patient. That is why the depth control is important. So currently, OSTEM has the digital guided surgery system, which is called one guide. 
to make a guide, preparation is required. Let me talk in the order. First, the CT and scan data. Scan data can be acquired from the intraoral scanner or model scanner. CT and the scan data should be merged. Secondly, based on the merged data, implant size and position need to be determined on a software. Austin uses Implant Studio software. On the software, we design the implant and abutment and crown can also be designed together. The last step, we need to print the guide. A guide is the same as a template, so these three are the steps in the workflow. First, two data need to be merged. This is necessary because in the past we used the panorama, but we use CT to get three-dimensional data on bone, teeth, and anatomical structures like nerve canal. Based on that, we design a guide. On the CT data, one is missing. There's no soft tissue data. If you control the gain value, soft tissue in a rough form can be observed, which is not very accurate. To get accurate surface data, as in the left, you can use a model scanner, or in the middle, intraoral scanner, to get the surface data, including the teeth and gingiva. CT data need to be merged with the scan data. So, in Korean, it is Pyeonghap. The CT data and scan data are combined together. That means the data are combined or merged. On the CT data, there's no gingiva data, only teeth and bone. On the right, in the model data, there's no data on bone, only gingiva and teeth data. In the scan data, fortunately, there is common denominator, teeth. So based on that, we can combine the two data together to get the complete set of information. As you can see, on the actual software, we do like this. CT data on the left and surface data, we mark the same dot, same data on the canine. And uh, it is marked on the software. And on the other side, we mark the same position and they can be merged. Surface data and CT data are merged to provide the complete data, including bone, gingiva, and bone. The full set of information, as you can see, once it is merged, crown can be designed in advance based on that crown, implant size, depth, and position can be determined to create such crown. In order to reproduce the implant design like that, a surgical guide is designed later. On the left, the guide is designed and that needs to be fabricated physically, so it is printed out as a surgical guide. The data on the left needs to be printed out to fabricate a surgical guide on the right using the 3D printer, which I talked about in the last lecture. Using the workflow, as you can see in the chart, there is a dental clinic in the left and the right, and in the middle there is the Austin Digital Center. CT is taken in a clinic, intraoral scanning or model. Impression is taken and a model is sent to the digital center, and in the center the data is merged on the software and implant position is designed and 
It is designed first by the center and through various methods using a team viewer. Your computer is linked or connected to the center's computer and uh, the design is confirmed by a dentist. Then the printing center in the Austin Digital Center prints out that guide and sent to you, which is used during surgery. In creating a guide, there are some methods. This is an example in our clinic. One guide template can be ordered. This is an ordering page. OneGuideAustin.com is the address to order these things. Patient information and bone information are entered. Now I check the one guide template to order it. And you can request the design to the center and you confirm the design and it is printed out in the center. That is the option. And you can see another option, which is one guide design. The previous step is the same. That means you send the CT and the scan data to the center where design is done and it is confirmed by you. Then the guide is not fabricated. Only the confirmed design file is sent to you through email and you get that through email and uh, you print it out using your own 3D printer in your clinic. And there is a printing request a temporary crown. You can request a temporary crown. It's fabricated at the same time. Stock or custom abutments can be ordered too. Printing, when you receive the data to print it out in your clinic, I talked about the 3D printer last time. DLP and LCD printers from Austin. It takes about an hour to print out a guide. So you can prepare a guide very fast. But if you use the printing service of the Austin Center, it will take a week or 10 days of, to get the printout. So this is the second option, which is just getting the guide file from the center. The time taken would be halved. Fabrication and the travel time of the guide from the center to you can be reduced and the cost can be reduced. As I said before, printing only. This is not a commonly used option. Up to guide design, you do it using your own software and you're using only the printing service of the Austin Center. I don't think they do it often. Anyway, that is one of the options available. So you can obtain the guide through one of those three ways and you need one more thing, the guide kit for surgery. To use the guide, you need to have matching instruments for surgery. If you ordered one guide template, you need to have one guide kit. On other companies, products or third party products will not work. So if both of them are ready, you are ready to do the guided surgery. May I ask a question? Sure. There seems to be many options to order one guide. Yes, three options, and it can be more if you order a temporary. What is the best option? One guide began to be available about four years ago. At the beginning, we had to use the center service because uh, many clinics had CT equipment, but about four years ago, not many clinics had intraoral scanners. So CT and rubber impression were sent to the center, which scanned them using a model scanner. Rather than sending a model, now actually the model should be sent via post. It took time, but 
Doro scan and CT data can be sent instantly via email. Now, 3D printers are available in many clinics, not only for a guide, but uh, for temporaries as well. So currently, in terms of the price performance, the second option would be the best. Not many clinics have the designing software because it is quite expensive, as I said before. The software price is quite high, that's what I said. If you have many such cases and if you have to fabricate a lot of guys, it is meaningful to buy the software. But usually we can use the software in the center. So the second option, we send the data to the center and they do the design and send us the designed file. I believe that is the best option to save time and in terms of price performance and the material cost is very low therefore the second option is strongly recommended to reduce the fabrication time and the cost so it's like hitting two birds with one stone that is right because the price of 3D printers has gone down considerably. Thank you very much. Would you continue with your lecture? So the guide is prepared for surgery, and I can say that there are people who haven't used the one guide, but there are none who have used it just once. Surgery. If you get used to the guided surgery, it will be very difficult for you to do the surgery without it. Personally, that's what I feel. Yes, um, we, it is very simple and uh, it is accurate. Let me talk about the benefits of using a digital guide. If you do surgery using a guide, you can do very efficient surgery for a patient. And additionally, you can perform pre-planned surgery of course, in the past, we made a model and looked at it and it took a panorama x-ray and we did, we did the tracing. And then with the guided surgery, we need to look at the CT more and we need to study in advance. Therefore, pre-planning is very important. Secondly, it is minimally invasive. Third, we use the top-down planning, putting the prosthesis, final prosthesis first before surgery. Lastly, we can prefabricate a provisional crown, which I think is really great. Of course, it is a provisional, but still. Let me elaborate on that a little bit more. In the past, in the posterior region, when an implant is placed, the existing denture is used after relying it using one guide. If you do the surgery, the patient used RPD after placing an implant in the posterior region. Right after it, abutments are connected and the prefabricated provisionals were delivered bilaterally, as you can see here. The patient came with the RPD and uh, one hour after the surgery, when he or she leaves the clinic, they have all the teeth in the mouth, which makes the patients very happy. And uh, this is really satisfying for a surgeon to see. And anterior is a problem. Flippers or SS retainer used to be used. The retainer is fabricated or resin Composite resin facing is delivered to make up for the aesthetic deficiency. After placing an implant immediately after extraction, a temporary abutment or stuck abutment, usually the transfer abutment is connected and the temporary is made out of a shell. For such abutment, they can be, they should be trimmed right after surgery beside 
a patient and the resident should be filling the shell to fill up the shell. So it took some time and it was not a very it was not a very clean thing to do. Blood or bodily fluid can stain the shell, but if you place an implant using a guide, we know in advance the position of an implant, so PMMA can be milled in advance compared to the PMMA made with the salt and pepper technique. The milled PMMA is completely cured, so in the mouth of a patient, it is very clean and can function for a long time. So this is a big plus for the anterior region. Not only that, especially in the anterior region, the prefabricated restoration can give big benefit in managing gingiva. The implant is immediately placed on the, in the socket. The bone packing is done. It can fill the gap. However, it cannot prevent the collapse of soft tissue using a guide. If we have a very good position of an implant, labial bone and the soft tissue can be managed if you use one guide. For example, in this case, after placing an implant, bone packing is done and the prefabricated customized abutment is connected and a temporary crown is attached. If we look at it step by step, extraction, using a guide, an implant is placed on the right. There is a big void in the socket where bone packing is to be done. Collagen containing bone is packing the space. Usually, when you do the bone packing, it includes the soft tissue, which is hard to maintain. In that state, a healing abutment can be connected. Then, the healing abutment is smaller in size compared to the size of the socket and it is round shaped, therefore it is hard to maintain the state. If um, provisional can be prefabricated, on the left, bone packing and custom abutment connected, the bone is blocked by the margin of the custom abutment. Over it, prefabricated PMMA crown is cemented. This is immediate post-op picture. Extraction, implant placement, bone packing, and custom abutment connection, and temporary crown is connected. The patient comes to the clinic depressed over the extraction of a frontal tooth, and when he or she leaves the clinic, the patient is impressed by having the frontal tooth in place and uh, until final restoration, it can serve the functional role excellently. On the left, pre-op, on the right, final restoration is delivered. Cervical bone is very well formed, not only bone but soft tissue. On the left, before extraction, Final restoration is delivered on the right. If you look at gingiva on the right, that is the gingiva over implant. It is in the same position and the soft tissue is very well healed. As you saw in the CT x-ray, the bone is formed very well. In this case, a custom abutment is used, but this one a stuck abutment, a transfer abutment is used for a similar result. In the designing stage, we, we need to make a decision whether the stuck abutment or transfer abutment can be used in a patient. In this case, it was possible. So number one and two in the anterior region are to be 
extracted and stock abutments were used as provisionals. Ostem guide is fabricated with metal sleeves. There are two types of one guide, sleeveless and with sleeves. The model is printed out using a 3D printer and uh, this is all prefabricated before surgery. PMMA is built in advance. In this case, the excess holes had to come out toward the incisal edge. On the right, transfer abutments are connected to be used after surgery. Surgery before extraction on the left and after extraction on the right. Using a guide, implant placement, transfer abutment connection. As you saw before, bone packing. In this case, the transfer abutment cannot support the bone fully, so a provisional restoration is expected to play the role, and the provisional is supporting the bone packed. It is sutured before extraction, after extraction, implant placement, bone grafting, provisional restoration, they are all done. As you can see in the picture, so the surgery was properly done. So due to constraint of time, as I showed you, using one guide, the surgery can be effectively done. Other than that, additionally, custom abutment and prefabricated provisional restoration can be used for favorable soft tissue contour and for aesthetic prosthesis. So those are the additional benefits you can gain if you use the guide properly. A more satisfying and a happier implant prosthesis can be achieved throughout the series of five lectures. Um, thank you very much for watching. And I hope with the digital dentistry, you would have a more satisfying and enjoyable outcome. I hope I have another opportunity to do lecture. Thank you very much. It was a very interesting lecture. Among many benefits of one guide, which one do you like the most? Well, placing an implant precisely, that's the most important thing when it comes to the guide. But uh, planning stage is very important. We look at panorama x-ray, but if you make an incision and open a flap, actually something new emerges and uh, we had to adjust the plan. But from the planning stage, CT or scan data are merged and uh, you can do the surgery in advance once, looking at the CT is like we look into after opening a flap, and if you merge the scan data, it's like you can place exactly the same implant that you are going to place. And you can check the bone contour and uh, determine whether bone grafting is needed or not. So you go to the patient before you go to the patient, you can do the mock surgery. That is the most important benefit of one guide. Thank you very much for the answer. It was a very interesting lecture through real-time Q&A. We have received some questions. We have some questions posted on the dental site. Wing Wings asked, I need to focus on this lecture more because this is the last one. I look forward to the coffee coupon. I hope you get the coupon. DDD gave us a question during the implant surgery what percent of the surgery do you use a guide to dr lee 
100% of the cases. For me, without a guide, since five years ago, I've never done a surgery without a guide. Beginners may find it difficult to use a guide, the scanner, and CT, but if you don't have software, you cannot do like that in all cases because it is it costs money. For a single implant placement, 60 or 70,000 won of cost is added for a single implant placement, and you may think it's not worth it, but I have a 3D printer and I began to print them out directly and um, with the increase of the cases and uh, I feel the benefits of the guided system fully I purchased the software you said that uh, the software is very expensive yes despite the high price it was totally worth it so I bought it so I use three of them all of them there's no reason that I do not fabricate a guide. Even to place a single implant, I realize the benefit of using a guide is totally worth it. To answer the question, I use it in 100% of the cases. In the future, digital dentistry will be in the mainstream. Digital guide, definitely. I totally agree too. Next. Someone called Nix ask a question. If a prosthesis is prefabricated with that fit after the surgery, I'm a little bit worried about it. Regarding the provisional, I didn't calculate, but out of 10 cases, 8 or 9 cases, they fit very well, requiring almost no adjustments. Even for a guided surgery, if the case is a big case and the, there can be implant placement errors, so temporary provisionals are fabricated in separate sections and they get combined together. If the span is short, they fit pretty well. But when you are worried that the errors can occur during implant placement, you need to have some room. Cement gap should be sufficient enough. So if the gap is really big, we can do the real lining. If not, we use the final cement. So using the cement, the gap can be filled. So in one or two cases out of 10 cases, a little bit of alterations would be needed. I think if there are teeth in the most posterior region, it would be okay. But in the free end case, during surgery, errors can occur. That can happen, yes. That's right, Professor. Let's go to the next question. Someone called Cloud asked the question, Dr. Lee, do you do the guided surgery in only flapless surgeries? I didn't count, but 8 out of 10 I do flapless. From the design stage, I determine whether it will be flapless. We know whether it will be flapless or not during the designing stage, very rarely we need to open the flap when we designed it as flapless. If the patient condition, granulation tissue removal, or if we expect to do some additional work that we might do. Then, from the designing stage, we need to design it as open flap case, and that should be determined in advance in most of the cases. But you do flapless in most cases? Yes. As much as possible, I do it as flapless. 
Yes, flap list as much as possible. I understand. Someone with the ID of Pulkumyo Bochol commented that it is a very good explanation to understand. Thank you. So you use guided surgery in 100% of the cases. So let's conclude the Q&A session here. And I'd like to express my gratitude to all those who joined us in the real-time discussion. We will do lucky draw and uh, 10 people will receive coffee coupons. Dr. Lee, we finished the Q&A session. Do you have any advices or tips for the viewers or doctors who are senior or junior or your peers who study late into the evening with us. I started digital dentistry 10 years ago, so I'm not too far ahead. I have experienced it a little bit earlier than others, before and after, before the digital dentistry and after. That's completely different world. It's not the same clinic. That's what I feel. I hope many doctors do not get scared of trying something new. You can start with something small. I strongly recommend it. Once you start it, if you think it's not for you, you can stop it. However, I can definitely say you will not stop in the middle. Last lecture, someone asked whether now is not too late. I jokingly said it's too late, but uh, it's not late at all. Just come into the new world as soon as possible. Compared to Dr. Lee, I have been with analog world for long and I've been exposed to the digital world just for a short while. I do a lot of digital approach, so I adjust the prosthesis that arrived. How is it? I hardly have to adjust the prosthesis. In the past, when we used the analog approach, the lab would send us a cast and I had to grind it really hard. So it required a long chair time. Now it is considerably reduced in terms of time. It relieves our stress and the patients would welcome it. This is really a win-win game. That is right. Regarding the hot issue and the digital special lectures, Dr. Lee ran to the studio after treating patients all day on every Friday. It wasn't easy. I learned a lot from you and I became a quasi-expert in it. Thank you very much. I hope in the future you come back to the studio to give us other lectures. Sure. Thank you very much for watching Prosthodontics on Friday. How was the lecture by Dr. Lee? The guided surgery uh, must have felt closer to you. If the questions are not answered yet during the broadcast, we will send the, the answers later. The next speaker is Dr. Ho in -shik of Ho in -shik Dental Clinic with the title of Digital CBI, Crown, Bridge, and Inlay. Thank you very much for watching us until the late hour. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>